Hey yeah, and it's Joe the CRM chap here and we're back with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the developer's exam for those who are looking to validate their skills uh, developing solutions involving the Power Platform. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at webhooks and how we can potentially leverage a Azure function app alongside them. So in a previous video we looked at uh, service endpoints. Now these are great for when maybe you've got asynchronous uh, processing scenarios, i.e. You, you're not too concerned about the logic happening as part of when people are sort of creating or updating records and that transaction flow within Dataverse. For situations where you do care about that and you want things to be executed synchronously, then webhooks give you a nice option of being able to sort of do that and be able to contact external services, pass off information from the Dataverse environment and then wait for that to complete and then respond back accordingly. So in today's, uh, what we're going to do is show you how you can, first of all, build a, an Azure function that can then be used as a target for a webhook connection. And then we'll see how a webhook sort of works in terms of the setup steps and the types of information that it sort of spits out into the function app. So we're going to, first of all, go away from the maker portal, make.powerapps.com, and we're going to jump into the Azure portal. And we just want to create a brand new resource in here. It's just going to be a brand spanking new Azure function app that we want. So we're just going to search for it at the top like so. There it is, function app. So we're just going to create that. Uh, I'm just going to call this PL400 sample. I'm just going to use today's date as well, just to make sure it's unique. Um, and then in terms of the, the runtime stack, uh, we just want to set it to .NET 3.1 like so. And then we'll just move, push this to UK South as well. Other than that, we can just leave the default settings as they are. Take a few seconds just to validate, and then we'll be able to go off and create this resource. And this will typically take anywhere between sort of uh, you know five to ten minutes, so we'll, we'll jump back in a second when it's completed. Okay, so the deployment's finished, so we can just jump straight into the resource. Now, typically, when you're building out a function app, you would it'd be preferably want to try and use Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code to sort of build this out. It gives you a much better um, development experience. Um, in today's example, we're just going to jump in and we're going to code within the function app itself, um, it, just for the purposes of the demo, really. Um, as I say, it's not something I generally recommend that you would do. Try and use Visual Studio where you can. So I'm going to click on functions down here. Uh, we're going to add in a new function. And what it's going to be, uh, we've got various different function types that we can choose from. In this case, we're going to be building out a HTTP trigger function. So just give that a second to load. So we want to make sure this option here, developing portal, is left as is, and then it's going to be the HTTP trigger option that we choose down there. Um, and we're just going to give this a name of, um, just going to call this uh, webhook uh, sample as an example. Then we can just click on add down there, take just a few seconds then just to create that function within our app. We can have as many different functions as we want within our particular app. That's one of the nice things about it. So just click into webhook sample. And then from the code and test area, um, we can then um, do exactly what it says in the tin. We can see, okay, we've got some sample code in here, and we can then maybe just test it at any point. So I can maybe just do a quick test on here to run that, and then we can see the results straight away at the bottom in the logs down there, and then also there. So we can see that, yeah, it's just done, basically just taken a sample of information through, and it's just returned that to us in a sort of a okay response like so. It's a pretty nice experience here in terms of being able to test things quite quickly, which is always nice. So we want to just uh, modify this um, this sort of sample function just a little bit. Um, so effectively, uh, we're going to replace the entire um, run action on here with a new one. So I'm just going to grab something from my keyboard over here. I'm going to select the existing um, task here, the run task. I'm just going to paste in my new code like so. Now all this is doing is that it's going to take in sort of a JSON um, response. Then it's going to just going to spit that out into a nicely um, indented serialized um, version within the sort of console window. So just you know, typically you know you maybe do something a bit more complex, but for the purpose of this example today, there's not really much um, else that we need to do here. So I'm just going to hit on save like so. Um, it's going to tell me that it's compiled successfully, which means that it's all good. And I can click on integration down here, and I just want to remove a um, an output step that's on the function app because it's not going to be relevant for our particular demo or scenario. So in this case, this output over here, I'm just going to click on it. 
I'm going to click on delete like so. And that's all done for now. The only thing we now just need to do is I need to get the URL of the particular function. And I can do this by going up to the overview tab. We can see we've got an option there, get function URL. I'm just going to grab that. I'm going to save it onto my clipboard over here. And we're going to return to it in a few moments. So uh, similar to um, Service Bus Endpoints, we work with our webhooks from within the plugin registration tool. So I've got it open from an example earlier. It's already hooked up to my Dataverse environment. Um, so all we can, all we need to do in here is just click on the register option up here, and we can see we've got an we've got a option here for register new webhook, which we can click on like so. Now there's a few settings that we need to define on here. We need to first of all give it a name. So I'll just call this, let's say, PL400 sample. We need to give in the the endpoint of our particular URL. So it will look a little something like this. Um, it would be the URL that we defined earlier, which is then appended with the name of the function app that we're calling. Then we need to modify the authentication for our particular um, webhook. So in this case, we're going to be doing a webhook key as an example. Um, so all I want to do is just on the end of the URL that I grabbed on the clipboard, um, the entire webhook key is going to be on there. So I'm just going to paste that into there like so. Then I'm going to hit on the save button. And that's been created like so. So now this works in a fairly similar way to not only our plugin steps, but also our service endpoints, which effectively means that we can just register a new step onto there and fire our information as and when it changes in the Dataverse environment. So in this case, if we just presume that maybe we just want to handle, maybe let's say, updates to our account as an example. Again, this could be any message or table entity combination type that you sort of want. Um, I'll in this case just say that it's going to trigger on the um, account name we typically always want to make sure that we specify at least one or several filter attributes um, it's generally bad practice not to use them um, and in this case it's going to be a synchronous uh, webhook um, that we want to call it with um, and it's going to be post operation so in this case I'm going to click on register new step like so and that's been created and ready to go so now we can just give this a test I'm just going to jump into my uh, data, Dataverse environment. I'm going to jump into my sample model-driven app, which has got my account table in there. And we're just going to select an account. So maybe this one on here. We're just going to maybe rename this one to, I don't know, Contoso uh, Manufacturing. Save. So now if we were to go back into the monitor tab on here, we should see the execution run. As it occurs, we see, yeah, we've got a 200 error on it, 200 OK on here to say that it's been completed successfully. That's actually from a few minutes ago, I think. Um, yeah, the logs can sometimes take a few minutes to sort of trigger through. So let's just open up the, the actual um, log streaming service and let's trigger the operation again. Um, so in this case, maybe Gintoso... Um, we just change this to, I don't know, VentureWorks Cycles instead. Let's save it this time. Okay, and now we can see in the log streaming service we get through the entire sort of request. So again, let's just get this pasted into something that looks a little bit nicer. Um, so this is from earlier, so I'm just going to paste over right this, use a bit of Notepad++ um, magic to make it look nice. And again, what we're seeing here is 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 almost identical to um, the example that we saw of our service bus endpoint. So we've got the entire context, the entire transaction, which has been which has been spitted out into our function app. Uh, this has happened as part of the save operation. It's a synchronous operation, so it's not completed the transaction in the database until it's been able to send this through successfully, and it's got a thumbs up back to say that yeah, it's okay. And we can see we've got all the same kind of details on here that we can work with. So, for example, here's our brand new account name value that's come through. Um, and if we if we were so minded, we could also maybe add on post or pre-entity images as well to get a bit more sort of useful data out of there. So, with that done, you know we can potentially then use our function, you know, as a plugin potentially. So, if we've got a particularly long running up long running or complex bit of code that we need to run. Instead of running it as a plugin within the Dataverse environment, we could just set up a function app uh, and we could just fire off the um, the context from from our environment and execute it all out in the function app. Um, we would need to make sure as part of that that we're using um, version 1 of the function app, um, um, sort of um, version 1 of the function app, sort of, um, um, what would you call it, the... Um, 
sort of, I think, framework or something. And because effectively at the moment, all of the SDK libraries for Dataverse are still .NET framework. So we can't use .NET Core or anything like that yet. Although there is stuff in preview at the moment that will hopefully unlock the capability in the future. So that's it for today's video on webhooks and how you can use them with Azure Functions. So I hope you found this video useful um, as part of your exam revision or just for general learning. Uh, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. Uh, and all this we say is have a great day. Cheers.